You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. now for the expert source for inside information on the options markets. It's time for Options Insider Radio with your host, Mark Longo. All right, everybody. That music means it's time once again for Options Insider Radio, the interview program here on the old network where we welcome on guests from throughout the world of options and derivatives and proceed to pick their brains for the benefit of you, the listener. And next up on the old program, we have a newcomer to the show and indeed to the network. He is Ian Greaves, the head of product over there at Eris Exchange. Ian, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, Eris X, just to uh, make Eris sure we're X. talking about got, the right company. Got the new, new branding going on here. Well, we'll get into all of that in a second. But before we do that, let's start off as we are wont to do with all of our first timers here on the show. Give us a little bit of an overview of your background in the space and how you found your way to Eris X. Yeah, for sure. So um, been in the uh, capital markets industry for about 25 years. Uh, started as an options trader on the Life Exchange in London. Um, traded index FTSE options. Um, and really enjoyed that, uh, but really got into technology and uh, option modeling and uh, kind of, uh, you know, what drives the market and things like that. And of course, everyone knows the uh, the life exchange went uh, electronic in the in the late nineties, and that drove me further into the the technology realm. And uh, I got lucky enough to work with a few people that had built a. Uh, uh, the first auto spreader in the futures industry, and uh, I came over to Chicago and uh, haven't really gone back since. Um, but that really drove me into, again, further into the technology game of uh, building automated trading tools and uh, connectivity, DMA, you know, direct market access kind of solutions and things like that. And then most recently, before I joined Eris, I was with Object Trading, uh, running their U.S. office for uh, DMA connectivity and global connectivity and stuff like that. I'm familiar with those guys. We talked to them right before the, uh, they're part of the Vela, the expanding Vela. Uh, group now uh, over there, your former cohort. Speaking of expanding, you guys have uh, have expanded and changed a little bit since the last time I caught up with you guys. The last time I chatted with you, I believe, was down at FIA Boca. I got ch- caught up with your head of sales there, uh, Jeff Sharp, and we talked about a lot of interesting things, and, and he kind of at the end dropped a few hints that perhaps, perhaps crypto may be on the horizon uh, for you guys. Uh, you didn't leave any hints as to what extent. Uh, so let's get into that because you guys have, have done some interesting things over there in oh, the six or so months since I've chatted with you. Catch us up. Uh, what's going on? What have you changed? What's new? What is Eris X? Catch us up on all this here, Ian. 
Yeah, sure. So um, obviously the the Eris business has been around for a number of years as a regulated futures market for interest rate swap futures. Um, the guys who are running that part of the business now have done a really good job and uh, and grown that to be able to license those products out to various exchanges. And most recently, the interest rate swaps are moving over to CME in December this year. And that allowed the, uh, the board and the investors to look at what they wanted to do with uh, that regulatory medallion of, of being able to list futures uh, contracts. And so, um, well, they decided to go in the direction of the digital asset space um, for, for various reasons. Um, but I guess the best thing uh, about that is the fact that uh, now that means kind of um, many new products that we can bring to market um, with that license uh, to list futures. But in being able to list futures and trade futures in, a, in an exchange, that's really cool, but um, you need somewhere to clear them. So the construct of our, of our products, we decided that we wanted to have our own clearing house as well. So we have a submission in with the CFTC. It's pending approval. It's been published, um, so it's out there to read. But, uh, you know, we hope to get that license maybe in uh, January uh, in 2019. So the, the old business, I guess I can say the legacy business, you're still in it, of course, is uh, the swap futures. That's what we've talked about a lot here uh, on the network in recent years. Is it fair to say then that's moving more into the licensing realm and you're licensing that over the, to CME to trade there? And the, the full focus, the full attention of Eris, now ErisX is going to be on crypto going forward? Yeah, that's totally correct. So uh, Eris Futures will be is being rebranded right now. I'll, I'll let them maybe talk to you about that. Um, and and the, the business I'm focusing on, ErisX, is all about digital assets, futures, spot contracts, and uh, growing that platform. So this is a wholly new entity then. This is, I mean, you mentioned Eris Futures still exists, but this is a separate entity uh, with the Eris name attached, but a separate entity completely focused on all things crypto. That, that's that's right. Yeah. So we have some common uh, investors, um, but we also have new investors on the on the digital side or the you know the the Eris X side as well. So it is a it's a purely focused on on the crypto assets and the business it, from that regard. Yeah, you mentioned the investors. You guys just completed a funding round, and you you didn't mess around. You went to some big ones. You got TD Ameritrade, Virtu, uh, Cibo, a few names you've heard of, even CTC. Some of the trading firms around here. A uh, third stone, of course, uh, funds a lot of ventures in the space as well. So uh, you guys clearly have some have some deep pockets are interested in what you guys are doing over there at RSX, Ian. Yeah, I mean, it's been really exciting, uh, you know, bringing those investors on board, uh, telling them about our, you know, our plans and our desires and, and really having them buy into it. Obviously, TD Ameritrade, I mean, amazing for us to uh, for us to be working with them and obviously being able to bring, uh, you know, crypto, digital assets, spot and futures to, you know, to their 11 million customers. Um, we really look forward to, you know, getting that done. But then the other the other investors out there as well, um, as you mentioned, Virtu, XR Trading, Third Stone, um, Susquehanna, I mean, I could name them all and obviously there's some drw of course there's there's really it's really a good testament to you know what we plan on building and bringing those customers into the you know into into investing in us that uh, shows that we probably are on the or should be on the right track to uh, you know what we're building hey doing something right someone someone yeah, someone exactly. out there agrees with what you're doing uh, speaking of what you're doing I, I was joking to you before you sat down there but only only partly you're about the i don't know i've lost track of how many people have sat exactly in that chair we are sitting right now ian over the past few months and told me they're starting a new crypto derivative exchange uh it's uh, it's becoming shall we say the popular the trendy i feel like i should be doing it so it's the trendy thing to do these days uh so i'm curious so what is it obviously you have some good backers behind you what else is it you think really sets your new crypto derivatives venture apart from the the quite a few others that are out there tilting at that windmill as well yeah, that's a, that's a good question, right? So um there are obviously a number of other competitors that we would you know consider um but what are we doing that's uh, interesting and different? Um, I guess, but to start with, why are we doing it is obviously we've run a uh, regulated futures market for seven or eight years now, uh, very familiar with the process and what that means, and obviously regulatory reporting, surveillance, and all the tools that we have in place in our current swap futures market, uh, and being able to utilize them to build a, you know, a digital asset market that should be you know, looked at as a, a fully regulated exchange. Um, obviously, we'll have spot in there as well that wouldn't be regulated by the CFTC, but we're running it within the same DCM and DCO framework. So, it, it, you know, all the best practices, surveillance, um, regulatory kind of aspects that we would apply to futures, we're going to apply to spot. That obviously is our heritage. That's, you know, where we came from. It shows that, um, you know, we're, we're not uh, we're new to this space. Um, and we actually, the, the old business actually had a... Um, 
a, a review by, by the CFTC last year and got you know you know the, the highest marks. So we're in a very in a very good place uh, from a regulatory standpoint to to bring this offering to market. I guess what else are we doing? As I've mentioned, spot and futures on the same platform. That's going to be uh, hopefully you know you know. It's very exciting to our customers um, and what we can offer to the industry. Our futures are going to be physically delivered uh, and not just Bitcoin, but Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum and Litecoin as well. So trying to broaden the uh, the product set, uh, offering it to a lot more customers so there's a little bit more appetite for them to, you know, invest in more than just one asset. And uh, and as I said, you know, futures upon those as well. Um, you know, obviously there's backed out there with a, the one day future that they're, they're planning on launching. Uh, and we think that's great. Obviously, they've, they're, they're pretty a use case and, and getting people in like uh, uh, Starbucks and Microsoft in the future. Ours is going to be, uh, you know, longer dated, you know, weekly, monthly, quarterly, serial kind of um, uh, futures contracts targeted much more at the, you know, the, the investor landscape that maybe want to hedge their underlying assets. So being able to deliver crypto assets into the clearinghouse and use them as, as the collateral to, you know, hedge their position with the futures now, obviously, Sibo is an investor in this new venture. You obviously have a legacy relationship with CME Group as well. But it sounds like from what you're saying, these are going to be new, uh, new futures products. You're not just going to list, you know, the existing Sibo and CME contracts. Yeah, that's correct. They're not. They're, I mean, obviously, the CME and CBOT, CBOE's contracts. Um, you know, it's great that they had them out there and they've been out there for you know a year now, um, kind of testing the waters and 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 probably been a really good proponent of controlling the volatility in in you know in the underlying assets. But really, that's just on Bitcoin and they're financially settled. That has a purpose and a place. But uh, we still believe that a a physically delivered contract is um, is is really the the thing that's still missing in the industry. It will help. Uh, it will help fund managers. It will help you know investors in uh, you know in ETFs you know when they get approved. But also it will um, you know help the owners of bitcoins being able to hedge their you know longer term exposure. Now, obviously, those other contracts have done a bunch of interesting things with their underlying. You know, CME has the reference rate they use with five different venues. They kind of aggregate together. CBO went with Gemini for their rate. Uh, you mentioned you're going to have physically delivered. So uh, I'd imagine you have a – is there a particular one contract you're focused on to figure, figure to deliver? Or what is, what is the exact underlying for these new, uh, these new futures? So the underlying will be the underlying cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin futures will have Bitcoin as the underlying, essentially. So we will have, as I said, futures and spot on Bitcoin and the three other coins as well. And so essentially the delivery will be that when those futures mature and the settlement process happens, the you know the dollar collateral from from the uh, from the buyer goes to the seller of the coin, and the coin from the seller goes over to the buyer. That will that will all happen in our clearinghouse in in Eris Clearing, and it will be facilitated by our you know infrastructure behind the scenes. It's interesting because, you know, a lot of people have come in here, like I said, and most of them have come with up to these, you know, obtuse ways to kind of get around doing the, the physical delivery. Why do, you, why do you guys feel that's so important? Is that what talking to your investors and your clients, they want a, a physically delivered contract? Is that why you're going this way as opposed to maybe a more abstract index to settle the contracts to? Yeah, sure. So, um, yes, definitely a, a lot of appetite out there for a physically delivered uh, futures contract. Um, and having a spot market, uh, you know, within the same platform really allows us to do that in a much more seamless nature than trying to work on, um, you know, EFPs or something like that, where, you know, you need a, essentially a, um, the two counterparties to be able to deliver the spot to facilitate the contract afterwards. Um, and so having that spot market really allows us to have that much better offering to our customers. Um yeah. Um, I mean, there's a, a, a number of other things I could go on about there, but obviously it's a lot more technology behind the scenes that, you know, people don't need to hear about. One of the things we uh, we hear a lot uh, in the crypto side of the space is that it's just not there yet. It's not ready yet from an institutional perspective. You know, uh, you can't really still do the amount of size in that space that you can in, let's say, options on Apple or futures on pick your pick on E-mini or something like that. So the, the size is in there. There's the there's the custodian issues that exist in the crypto space. There's a bunch of other legacy issues. It, liquidity is still fragmented across a variety of venues. Is it fair to say, then, that your focus, you kind of value added? Uh, the place where you think you're really going to deliver the value, at least initially, and maybe certainly with a lot of these investors, is on the institutional side and kind of making crypto maybe ready for prime time on the institutional side? Um, I, don't, I wouldn't 
always describe it as an institutional play, okay? So our, our offering is really um, one of the main things we're trying to be is intermediary friendly. Obviously, those intermediaries are the institutions that provide services to, you know, the end client. Um, we will actually, because of our uh, regulatory um, licenses, be allowed to take in direct customers, but that's really not what we're trying to offer. Um, we'd be happy if they want to come to us, and obviously the, the retail environment in this crypto world um, will probably get some people who want to be direct. But really it's about the intermediaries, and obviously you know, with TD Ameritrade, EDF Man, and those guys uh, that have invested in the business, it's working with them to provide crypto to their customers. So going back to that um, liquidity or uh, um, you know, uh, you know, the, the available um, contracts to trade, um, it's really bringing new people we see it is into the market, growing the pie, essentially. Um, obviously, TD's got a ton of customers out there. I'm sure some of them have already invested in crypto directly, but being able to put it into their same account that they have, uh, you know, sh you know, equities, options, maybe their 401k in the, f in the future. I mean, this we see this as growing the pie, not just, you know, offering it to um, large institution investors and things like that. And the other question a lot of people have when they're launching a new venue is, of course, liquidity. It sounds like uh, you've locked some of that up here with some of these initial partners like CTC and a couple others here, Pantera and others. So it sounds like you, you plan to have some decent liquidity at, at launch. Yeah, definitely. We're working with a lot of different liquidity providers, uh, you know, both the the traditional, you know, futures and equity based uh, kind of market makers and liquidity providers. And obviously, you can see some of them on, on our investor base, but also some newer, you know, more crypto focused firms. Um, you know, as soon as we put the press out there, of course, a lot of them contacted us wanting to provide liquidity to the market. And again, I think that comes down to the fact that, you know, having liquidity providers is great. It's lovely to have a nice order book type markets, but you need trading from somewhere and you need that natural flow of, um, of buyers and sellers to be, you know, working with that liquidity. And again, that's really where TD Ameritrade comes in and other institutional flow that we, you know, we're looking to bring on. I think going back to that uh, custody question or custody point you made earlier, obviously we're seeing that change as well with Fidelity, um, you know, commenting last week about what they're planning on doing. Um, and we only see that, we, we just see that business growing. Um, it, it's, it, it's still a new industry. It's still, um, early days, I guess, and John Tornator at CBOE always describes it as, you know, not even the first pitch has been thrown. It's, you know, still getting to the stadium. And I, I think that's right. You know, we've, we're building an infrastructure for the future of capital markets. Um, obviously, the, mar the products are, again, listed on there right now are cryptocurrencies. And obviously, from our CFTC regulation, they're going to be currencies and commodities, uh, you know, the instruments on our platform and how we, and how we grow that. But really, the, you know, the real-time clearing, the, you know, the real-time settlement nature of obviously the spot market and, and how the DLT infrastructure can really help that and transfer collateral between counterparties, you know, outside of the clearing mechanism, it, it, it's still growing. There's a, there's a lot more people to come on board and almost every podcast you listen to, there's people still talking about, you know, a lot more institutional money is, is ready and wants to come in. They're just looking for the right place. I know you mentioned you're, you're launching with spots and with the futures, but I think our audience would revolt if I didn't at least ask you about the options. You're, you're, you have a prime opportunity here, Ian, because, you know, CME and SIBO both rushed out of the gate with the futures and they kind of have taken a back seat now whenever I bug them about listing uh, the options. So here you go. You have a prime opportunity. You have spot. You have futures. Can we expect options someday down the road from you guys as well? As an ex-options trader, I can't wait to list options. Um, they're not going to be there day one. You know, day one will be Maybe spot. day two, day three. Day two will be futures. <laughs> it, it's it's on our it's on our plans, but uh, we don't have we haven't set a date on it yet. I'd I'd love to get it out there. Let's uh, let's get our business launched first and and see. Uh, See, see the flow and the customers that are coming into our business. And, and then obviously there's a lot of new uh, products and tools we want to launch, you know, coming after that. Speaking of launch dates, when can we expect to see uh, to see the glory that is Eris X trading for our eyes here? So right now we're planning on April kind of time frame to launch the spot market and then early Q, uh, sorry, early uh, second half for the futures market. There's obviously a lot of infrastructure in play. Um, spot market has... A number of you know challenges as well, but uh, is is quite um, linear in the way it gets delivered. Obviously, and being a clearinghouse, we can facilitate that. But obviously, in the futures market, there's. A lot more uh, infrastructure that's uh, typically set up, you know, back office structure and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, you need to have all those, you need to have all those um, third parties working together for the big FCMs, you know, to be able to process those trades uh, correctly and efficiently. So, uh, you know, we, uh, 
that's why that's why right now second half is uh, you know early second half is what we're planning for futures. Well, Ian, this is certainly exciting for us here. We like to see uh, new infrastructures spring up, new products, and certainly there's a lot of interest, a lot of mindshare, clearly a lot of capital around the uh, the crypto space these days. We're toying with our own forays into that space these days as well. So that should hopefully be launching sometime soon, probably before you guys go live. I think that hopefully if all things go well here uh, with us. But that said, we had kind of a bit of a, a far reaching conversation. But if you you forgot to mention something or maybe you want to leave our audience with a little bit of a hint, a little bit of a tease of what they can expect from you guys in the coming months. Now is the time, sir. The floor is yours. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I think really uh, it's going back to the instruments, obviously, more than just Bitcoin and being able to off these physically deliver futures, you know, and, and spot market. And um, we have a we have a couple of uh, other contract designs up our sleeve that we can't talk about yet, but we look forward to, you know, announcing them when we can, you know, obviously before go live, giving everyone some time to uh, consume them. I think the other thing is obviously, uh, you know, CME's contracts, five coin contract, CBOE is a, you know, a one coin contract. We're, we're going to be looking at um, probably slightly granular contract sizes to make it a little bit more, uh, um, a better appetite for uh, investors to get into. Um, and uh, especially with the fact that there's going to be Ethereum, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash futures as well i mean who knows you know obviously there's six months you know away before we actually launch this market um there could be some new coins i doubt there'll be new coins sorry what i mean is there probably could be some other coins that actually make it into you know a higher market capitalization and that we may look to add um you know as, as quick as day one or very soon afterwards obviously we're going to have a pretty strict listing policy on what those products mean things like um, market cap liquidity but also whether they look like currencies or commodities um, again running under the CFTC regulation we want to make sure we're you know staying in that landscape uh, even for the spot market as I said it's really about making this um, you know trusted stable um, clear infrastructure for people to trade in well, you know, it kind of surprised me, and I like your thoughts on this before we wrap up here. You know, a year ago, if you had asked me which coin, which product would be would be lighting up the tape, the one coin or the five coin futures, I would have said, I think most people said, oh, the one coin, clearly. Uh, Size-wise, that allows more people to play, a little bit more nuance there. Uh, almost a year later, it's kind of been exactly the opposite. It's been the five coin contract that CME that's that's been kind of dominating the flow. Is that a surprise to you? Is that something you guys are considering? You mentioned more granularity. Sounds like you're going the opposite way with even smaller contracts. Yeah, we've been we've been doing a lot of analytics on this. Um, I'm not. I, I couldn't really say why uh, the CME is you know getting more contract volume, more notional uh, in general. I mean, it's very interesting. Obviously, CME has done a great job with their contract, and their notional on a daily basis is um, you know above Coinbase's notional uh, for Bitcoin. Um, obviously, the the profile of um, of revenue is completely flipped with Coinbase. You know, trading and uh, you know in basis points, whereas the CME's contract based market. So. Um, CBOE though, um, obviously they've they've made some changes recently to their fee model. Um, so with some maker taker and some Turner fees, which is interesting. It'd be great to see them grow their product as well. I mean, I think there's enough room for, you know, more than you know, more, more than those two and more than us. But uh, obviously ours being a physically delivered contract, it'll be interesting to see the different dynamic on there. And and really it comes back to you know the seller of the sellers of our contract will be able to deposit coins as collateral, which you can't do on CME and CBOE right now. Well, Ian, this has been uh, certainly interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing this get up and running. If people want to learn more about Eris X, maybe check out the contract specs, kick the tires for themselves. Where should they go? What should they do? Well, right now we just have a landing page out there, erisx.com. Uh, love, love people to you know go there, sign up for uh, you know for more information. We'll be slowly building out that website to include the product specs and and everything you know from our regulatory standpoint, um, money service business licenses that we're applying for, so you know people in the US can trade the spot market properly. Um, but yeah, erisx.com is where it's going to be at. Erisx.com to learn more, and we'll look forward to seeing how all this unfolds in the marketplace around the April timeframe, Ian. That's right. Great. Thanks for coming on and looking forward to more great episodes, including a lot of great more crypto episodes coming from Options Insider Radio really soon. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 